Well, it's the home stretch before the election. Where are we at? What's to expect? Uh, let's get ready to rumble! You can't handle the truth! Hi, I'm Pastor Marty. Welcome to the Afternoon Drive. Please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Once you are, smack the bell, click the word all. That would give you notification of my rants, my ravings, my undeniably flawless reasonings. Hey, please like and share this video. It's the only way that we can get the word out that we're here. Thank you so much for watching and being a part of the Afternoon Drive. So with less than a week to go and already a couple of weeks of early voting underway and the results have shaken the Lang Legacy Corporate Corrupt Mainstream Media and the Democratic pundits that for the first time like ever, Republicans, i.e. Donald Trump, are leading in the early voting. So you've got the pollsters are nervous. They, they know that there is a, a groundswell building up for Donald Trump. They, on the one hand, don't want to report that because, one, they don't want to be seen as propping up Donald Trump and uh, suppressing the Democratic vote. Yet at the same time, when this election is over, they want to still be able to maintain some type of credibility. So they keep telling us it's neck and neck or, oh my goodness, at the last second, Kamala just surged ahead by two points. Or So here's what we need to know. We're in a great position. We're doing well, but you got to act like we're 10 points down. Vote. Get everybody you can to vote. And we've got to make sure that it's 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 too big for them to mess with. It's, it's too big to, to in any way, um, just at the last second, oh, look, we found this bin under this table that we forgot was here that has, you know, 11,000 votes for Kamala. Oops, we'll get those in right now. And oh, yeah, look at that. It just flipped and boom. Um, <laughs> we want to make it too big that they, so big that they just can't mess with it. But in these last weeks, we're hearing, you know, Donald Trump is Hitler, Donald Trump is Mussolini, Donald Trump is Stalin. He's all these and more. Because at the end of the day, they got nothing. She goes into softball interviews. She gets tripped up by the view. What would you do different to Joe Biden? Uh, nothing. Well, that wasn't the right answer, and immediately the polls reflected it. Uh, she talks about these things that she's going to do, but she, it's obvious she doesn't really know what she's talking about. And the more she talks, the more the American people are really beginning to discover she's empty. And so what do they do? They turn the big Trump rally at Madison Square Garden into this this racist fest, and they, they take you back to 1939 when the American Nazis uh, took and had a rally at Madison Square Garden. First of all, here's what historical dillweeds these people are. It wasn't the same building. Bum, ba -dum -bum. Not the same building at all. This is The Madison Square Garden of today is not the Madison Square Garden that was there in 1939. Let's, you know, I, I know it's one of those pesky little details, but I obsess that way. So there's that. So you're saying that any rally, anything that's taken place in Madison Square Garden since 1939 is somehow always going to be connected with the fact that the Nazis had a rally there? Huh. So all those Knicks basketball games that happened there, the fact that Billy Graham held evangelistic crusades there, the fact that Democrats have held rallies at Madison Square Garden. And if Donald Trump is Hitler, and his big Madison Square Garden rally was a recreation of the Nazi rally of 1939. It was the most diversified Nazi rally we've ever seen. There were Jewish speakers, there were black speakers, there were Hindu speakers like Vivek Ramaswamy. That's really kind of in the face and anti-everything that would go against National Socialism, i.e. Nazism. Uh, there was one comedian that made one joke that fell flat. The, the, the audience there didn't respond to it. He knew it. He immediately course corrected, and that was that. Like, nobody at the Kamala rallies has ever been uh, demonstrated any type of hyperbole and had to say something that immediately was a, uh, that was a no-no and, and moved on. Does Kamala get held into account for it? Of course not. 
But of course, we're going to use this in the Lang Legacy media to make Donald Trump look like Hitler reincarnated. What they can't deal with the fact is not only did Donald Trump pack the arena, but there was 10 times that amount waiting outside over 100,000 people in deep blue New York converged on Madison Square Garden. Kamala couldn't do that, even with a free fake Beyonce concert that never happened. The Democrats, a lot of them are realizing they fell for bait and switch. You know, they, they knew that Joe was in trouble, that, that Joe was cognitively not there and not going to be able to do it. But somehow Kamala ended up as their nominee, and no Democrat can really explain how she was kind of just declared the nominee. And she was, you know, immediately going to be loved and adored, and she was going to be cool, and she was a woman of color, and this was going to be great. And then she started opening her mouth. And people began to figure out really quickly, uh-oh, 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 we're in trouble. Kamala knows she's in trouble. She can't go on softball interviews. Donald Trump did a three-hour sit-down with Joe Rogan. It was fantastic. Kamala couldn't sit there and just converse for three hours. She does a 40-minute interview, and they edit it down to 20 minutes. Can you imagine three hours of Kamala word salad? So here we are at the end, and we're going, you know, hyperbolic with, you know, just the rhetoric of racist, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He's Hitler, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I would caution this. Be careful. Because, again, I don't want to be careful because we don't want to make YouTube mad at us. But you want to ask some of these people that are engaging in some of this over-the-time hyperbole, are you trying to create a fourth assassination attempt on Donald Trump? Are you trying to get some crazo that's, I, I, can't, let, I can't let Hitler reincarnated take over America? Were they, were they trying to get something started in Madison Square Garden Sunday night that epically failed on them? I mean, if you're a Democrat, can you really tell me what Kamala is for? What she's actually going to do? Other than the fact she hates Orange Man, Orange Man bad, he's the threat to democracy. Orange Man didn't deplatform anyone. Orange Man didn't put anyone in jail. You have the Biden administration's DOJ has gone after Trump. They're going after Eric Adams, mayor of New York, and other quote-unquote political enemies. This is the final stretch, that last week. We got this, but we've got to stay focused. Don't get rattled by what you hear on the media. That Madison Square Garden event was huge, and it happened in New York. And again, I still don't think the Democrats have quite wrapped their head around, and I, th I think they're, 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 they're laughing in delusion if they think, look, New York is still a lock for us. I've been saying this going on two years now. I think... Trump will flip New York. And that's going to send off a, a seismic mushroom cloud bigger than anything you saw over Hiroshima. That is the big three networks and the cable news channels on election night as their heads collectively explode when they have to say, Trump wins New York. Stay calm, breathe in, breathe out. If you hear people at work say erroneous things about Donald Trump, just politely correct it or just say, yeah, that's really not the case. But understand this, watching the media's meltdown, especially over what happened at Madison Square Garden, lets you know who's actually winning.